Uh, hey everyone, I have the huge privilege of uh, working here with Dave Bainbridge. We're just uh, at his home and uh, and we're working on my third album, Return to Order, and Dave's producing it. And uh, one thing I wanted to do was, um, I, came, I came up with a, a little melody and I thought what would be really ace would be to get Dave to improvise something to it. So, uh, and the reason for that is because on the Al Ion album Beyond These Shores, there's a piece called The Drift, which has oh, yeah. piano yeah. improvised this. We can maybe talk a bit about that. And then mm. uh, Dave also has a, an improv album called The Remembering, mm. which is full of piano improvisations. And I just thought it would be cool to give Dave the freedom to do that. And then we're videoing it so you guys can get a little peek behind the... Yeah, the, the whole thought process, really, yeah. of, the, of the track and what we're going to try and do. So, really, what you're seeing is literally what is going to happen. We haven't pre-planned mm. this at all. You're going to see Dave's process on how he takes a melody, uh, in this case, one that I've given him, and then really makes something from it. So, uh, mm. so there you go. Unplanned. This is the real deal. Totally, yes. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I've just listened to the melody... Um, earlier today. Um, I've heard it once before when you sent me the demo. Um, and um, I think there's a few things to consider really. Firstly, where it comes in the album and um, yeah. like the track before and the track after. So it needs to make sense as a whole musically and, and the way it transitions in terms of key and yeah. that, thing, that kind of thing and mood. Especially on the music the kind of genre that we're in which is sort mm. of a progressive music this album ha has to be a journey from the start to the finish mm. so it's a designed to be listened to as one whole piece of music yeah. so yeah it's really important that it doesn't that it really fits in that journey so yeah so i was just um i've just queued up on here we we uh, these are some demos from a few months ago um and this is the end of the, the track that comes before this. This is Joy Beyond the Walls of the World. Um, I'll just play the last uh, little bit. <laughs> G right there. Um, then um, the track after uh, you've got um, as the rain falls. Um, it's, uh, e minor, I think, isn't it? This one. So this starts. I don't know whether this is the same um, it's, beginning. Yeah, it's just need to sort of. So. Oh yeah. We have dogs barking. I should close the windows. So actually, that, that's pretty good because um, the, the previous chord finishes on a G. This one starts on an E minor, which has obviously got an e, a G in it. Um, and your your tune, um, uh, if I remember rightly, is. So that's kind of got, that's a C minor, so that's got a G in it. Um, so we could uh, probably get a quite a good transition yeah. there uh, between the pieces. Um, uh, so it's, it's just a case of, of yeah. having a go at it, really. Yeah, so I just want to check that there isn't a variation on, on my version, because I think, does it finish C minor the first time? And I feel like it resolves the second time. I think on the second time. That's, so I've got the original... I could, I could be misremembering. Yeah, so let's just... Um... So it's a bit of a double improvisation, it's because I improvised this melody initially, and thought, oh, that's cool, keep that. And then uh, we're increasing the improvisation amount. Yeah, so. so this is somewhere towards the end of your 
the original version that I've got. Recorder set up, so I think the thing to do is just to record it. <laughs> we should probably fill that window. Yes, up. yeah. Um, there's the chick- We're very rural here. Yes. We're in the Shire, literally. In the- <laughs> that's true. There's, there's... <laughs> yep, that's the rooster. <laughs> Alright, do you want to close the. Yeah. I think what I might do is try a few different things, uh, not necessarily even starting with the melody. Uh, there's a B section to this that you, you that I came up with, which is um, um, so I might play about with even starting with that on, but we'll do a few different takes and see. Yeah, so here we go. changing the chords which is a thing that you're really amazing at yeah so varying the harmony to the melody that obviously then the melody stays the same but then it gives such a different feeling to yes yeah what well, one of the things I, try, I thought of doing there um rather than um resolving to the major chord just keep uh, just change the melody slightly there so it's a bit more ambiguous as to whether that's major or minor yeah that was the only the only change to the melody really but uh, yeah, that, that bit uh, gives a lot of scope for uh, improvising on. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think that that was that was about um, a couple of minutes or so as well. So it's about the right uh, length. But the, yeah, the other thing about this track, you've called it, um, is it mysterious? Mysterious words of Lothlorien. Yeah. So it's got to kind of have a ambiguous quality to it, I think. Yeah, so what I'm sort of imagining is someone just walking into these woods, magical woods that the elves sort of uh, rule. There's just sort of slight fear of the unknown, but also a sense of wonder. So Okay, yeah. So it's definitely, yeah, it felt 
feels like you're capturing that. So yeah. Okay. Well, we'll let's keep that and um, take one. Yeah, we'll do a few takes and then just. Uh, Because that could really go really good into the next tune. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so after you're finishing on that chord, the next, well, the next tune doesn't, the, melt, the harmonies don't come in straight away, so you've got yeah. atmosphere going on. Yeah. So, yeah, you could have like a crossfade or something. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. Any comments on? Uh, I'm just enjoying it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's hard to pick a winner when they're all so good. Yeah. So, what, what do you want to do then? Do you want to do just a few more takes and then we just have a listen back and pick something out or yeah uh, I'll record a couple more takes and um, we don't want to have too many because then no we'll... I'll do I'll do maybe one or two more All I right. think and then um, we can we can have a listen uh, so I'm just putting another marker in so this will be take three all right, so we're saying we're just going to limit ourselves to four takes. Is that something you always do if you're doing an improvisation? You sort of limit yourself to a certain amount of takes. Uh, if it's a yeah, I mean, quite often if it's a piano improvisation, usually uh, it's like maybe two or three takes um, because I want to capture the spontaneity of uh, of the idea. Yeah, and absolutely. sometimes if I go over it and work it out too much, um, then it kind of lose it. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Like, I definitely get that as well. Yeah, I mean, Where... it's really different to doing um, like a guitar solo that's a set length in a in a song. Um, usually, I'll do more takes there and try and work work out something as we go along. But um, uh, when it's completely spontaneous, then I think um, I don't really want to do too many different takes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's it's good to think about maybe approaching it in a different ways, you know, for a, at least a few times. Um, I think uh, from my point of view on the album, one of the things is some of the demos, are like the thing that you record record the first time, you sort of really fall in love with it, and it's mm. really uh, I get torn when I can hear mistakes on the sort of slight mistakes on the demos, and then you go and re-record it as best you can and something seems a bit lost there's always that tension between that moment when you're really excited about yeah. creating this new thing and your initial reaction to the music um, 
So yeah, there's a balance there, but I'm really, that's why I think I was keen to get a bit of improv on the album, because mm. I think it does have a really different feel for the listener as well. Um, yes. Yeah. So you have like a variety of approaches on the album, it makes it feel like there's a journey there as well from the start to the end. So. Yes. Yeah. I mean, one of the great things about um, digital technology now is you can record everything and we, we've both got reasonably good microphones and yeah. software and everything. Um, so I... Whenever I come up with an idea, I always record it and um, try and record it to a good standard so that I can actually use that, uh, any of it in the finished recording if I need to. And that, yeah. that's a really big change from um, when I started producing albums for people because um, people would do demos at home and then get listen to them over and over and then get really attached to the sound. Demo love it's called, isn't it? Yeah, the and you'd get love. to the studio and it'd be impossible to recreate yeah. the circumstances and that, that sound um, because they've maybe recorded it on a cassette or something like that. A, a slight aside, I heard a story uh, last week about um, on uh, the, I think it's the guitar part for Billy Jean, there's a clean part, it goes ba 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 and what yeah. they did is they recorded it at Michael Jackson's uh, home studio, which I imagine was amazing, <laughs> but it was yeah. just a DI straight into the desk and if for, for those who aren't guitarists, mm. that's that's not a sound anybody likes. No. But then they went back to the studio to redo it all and everyone agreed that the, there's just something about the demo that they couldn't recapture. Yes. And so they yeah. kept, that's the part you hear on that record. I just thought it was an interesting story. So it's not just us. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. So, uh, yeah, I think, like, um, from your demos, um, you know, the album, you've captured the spirit of that, I think, because so much is, was recorded. That you can actually kind of keep, or at least you know, yeah, absolutely. keep close to. There are one or two solos that have survived in demo form. Yeah, so. yeah, there's yeah. some great ones. Uh, yeah, great guitar playing on this album. Really, really great. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so yeah, back to this. Um, All okay. right, so this is take yeah. three. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Maybe might explore the. Um, upper reaches of the piano. A bit one. of twinkling, yeah, of, uh, of fairy dust in the upper reaches. Yeah, okay, I'll just go for something. Yeah, I'd like to do that one again with same ideas, I think, um, doing something up here. Yeah, it sounds really nice in the upper registers, just like it'd be nice to get then to sort of a clearer version of the melody, I think. Yes, so it's yeah. To... That wasn't, actually, I meant to play a clearer version of the melody, but I played the wrong notes. <laughs> 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 That's the thing about improvising. You can um, it's all the all the right notes and <laughs> not necessarily in the right order. Not necessarily in the right yeah. order, but it, yeah, yeah. So take four. Great. One thing 
I really like you did on the last take is you were splitting the high chords and it almost because it sounded a bit like raindrops falling off the trees because you're sort of interspersing the different intervals. Yes. That was really nice. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, uh, yeah. So something along those lines. It's just like little, it sounded, I like because the rhythm seemed quite random, which mm. sounded quite like a nature kind of sound where you're getting sort of little bits, high notes alternating yeah. in the chords. That was really good. Yeah. Yeah. So, take five. Between those, we should find something that works. All right. Yeah. But it's like, All right. So this is uh, this is take one. Um, let's see.
love that. I love the dynamic shape of how you start with a long introduction, the melody. Yes. And the section yeah. And just yeah. That's... Yeah, kind of setting the scene there, and also um, not going to the major. Do 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 do. Yeah. Meant that in that space there, I could add some different chords uh, that were a bit more um, yeah, mystical, really cool. I suppose. Yeah. Um, I was yeah I was trying to go for a bit of ambiguity there. Yeah, that's good. As well. So yeah. That was good. And all, yeah. So also, I mean, the track you referenced, uh, "Adrift" on the Iona Beyond These Shores album, um, uh, that's got lots of atmospheric sounds kind of in the background. And I, so I was thinking. Um, we could maybe overdub a few things that are just you can hear them, but you're not uh, sure what they are. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Kind of indistinct, slight um, atmospheric type sounds in the background, but yeah. not not the rooster probably. <laughs> no, no. I mean, definitely. So as I'm listening, I'm trying to do the same as what I do when I'm writing the music. Is trying to imagine the scene, and I'm definitely getting shafts of light shining through trees. Mm. in a sort of uh, yeah in, in the woods that kind of yeah so I'm definitely getting that from the first take so yeah yeah, yeah. good it's good uh, and then I, I can't remember what I did on take two but this is take two okay I was thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I slightly prefer the first one just because mm. of the shape of, of yeah it seems to yeah take you somewhere a bit more yeah uh, it's, I mean it's still that one was amazing as well but mm. I think for me the, the first one edges it a little bit yeah so. yeah so yeah I think generally speaking when I come to the B sections I'm trying to lift the lift them dynamically um, yeah so they they'll louder and so the B section yeah. melody goes down 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 yeah down 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 quite a sim yeah. simple idea but I suppose like what you're saying is the you can harmonize that in lots of different ways yes yeah well. yeah there's a lot of scope there for changing the, the underlying harmonies yeah mm. Mm. <laughs> so this is take three Oh yeah, starting higher. So P 
hinting at the melody, but not playing the whole yeah. thing. This would give more scope for some background, yeah. kind of low, low atmospheric sounds. Definitely has sort of a twinkly. It's, it's, there's a sense of expectation, isn't there, when you when you hear that mm. that intro. quite like a drift in terms of the the melody's very it's in there but it's kind of yes Yeah, so there was us swapping bits of the melody between left and right hand. Yeah, I really like that. There. That's cool. Uh, yeah, and I just thought it short and sweet on that one. <laughs> yeah, and then it was take five, wasn't it? Because we take four, we. Um... Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this was the all in, the all in take. Yeah, and I was thinking more in terms of. Um, uh, the the I on the track beyond these shores um, and the end of that section I kind of uh, played a piano improvisation mm -hmm. as the track um, as the vocal finished <clears throat> um, so a bit more florid on this one Probably one where the melody is stated uh, the most obvious at the start. Yeah. At the start.
of the virtuosity of that one. Yeah, it's uh, really years spent uh, practicing scales and arpeggios <laughs> uh, had some uh, benefit. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <clears throat> There's one bit in it that gets a little bit in the middle. Um, I, I went to um, do, 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 when it goes to the F. I kind of went to an F chord too early and then. Um, so there's one harmony in there that I would change if um, yeah we can do that because it's in MIDI yes so yeah um, wow but well, I I think, yeah, yeah. yeah how to choose mm. it's like picking one of your favourite kids <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one's probably that last one um, certainly more dynamic mm. and it's I like the way that starts that one just with the melody high up. Yeah. Maybe we can edit a bit out, make it shorter if we could you could do that. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's tricky. That's tricky. Yeah. We'll pro we probably should um I'll, I'll record them all and then we can have a listen away from here. And probably good to have a listen in context as well. Yeah, I think we'll but, do um, that. We'll yeah, do that. Before and after the uh, yeah. previous tracks. I mean I lean I'm leaning towards the first one with a bit of the last one, but then I, I feel like I don't want to lose some of those really cool bits. Mm. So yeah, I think listening to it in context might be the way to go. And yeah. then it's like you said, mentioned earlier, we could always do a bonus track. Yes. So I, yeah, I definitely the, the last one, um, I'd be sad to lose some of the bits off that one if it doesn't quite fit in the context mm. of the record. So. Bonus tracks. Yes. Possible. <laughs> Great. Okay. Great. Um, Good. Well, I think I think we've achieved what we uh, set out to achieve. It's in there. Uh, they're yeah. like, yeah, all brilliant. So, all right. So yeah. I hope that was interesting mm. for you guys just to see the way that Dave has an ability to take just a simple melody and just reharmonize the chords. And he does it like totally live, which for me, uh, I mean, I do a bit of improvising, but that just feels really next level. Um, I guess that's the cool thing about piano, right? Is that you yeah, can it's really much easier to do on piano than uh, guitar because you um, you can see the harmonies much more clearly on on a piano. I yeah, think, so. well, Dave can see the harmonies. I just imagine, you know, like when you're doing it, you have these chord like uh, you know, like you see in films, like they have them blackboards with all them scientific symbols. Uh, yeah, I must imagine you just like these things jump out to you, and you're like augmented chord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like on um, on Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah where you see all the... But is it like that for you or not? Um, Please say yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course. No, uh, yeah, some, I think I can pre-hear some of the harmonies I'm trying to achieve. That, yeah, uh, sometimes they work and sometimes it, it doesn't work, but usually I can... I know what harmony I want to yeah. play next and usually I manage to hit it, but not, not it always. definitely yeah. feels like it's something that you can do that's pretty special. I remember when we recorded the last album you had yeah. with this Catherine in the studio and she played the pipe melody and you improvised some sort of string mm. chords underneath and it was just amazing. It was amazing because I didn't hear, like when I wrote, that melody I didn't hear the chordal possibilities that you literally improvise and I was mm. just like that's amazing and that is the version that ended up on, on the yeah record. yes yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a magic moment yeah I mean it's partly theoretical as well like knowing which notes um, which melody notes will fit with certain chords so like if you say if you've got like a, a D uh, I'll just uh, move the camera over. Hang on yeah. A second. Yeah, just uh, on that note, whether I can w hear the harmonies that are coming up and whether they come up in like uh, um, <laughs> symbols in front of me. Um, in a way, sort of that's 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 the way it happens. Um, so, like this was basically in C minor. So if I've got a D there, that's like the second or the ninth of the um, the chord. Uh, and immediately I'm thinking, how many different ways can I harmonise that? So there's obvious ones like um, where it's, it's part of the chord, like a B flat. Uh, there's less obvious. Well, D, 
D. But if you do it as a um, inversion, you get something like this. Uh, or you could have. So although D doesn't really fit as part part of a A flat uh, chord, <coughs> it can resolve to a, a note of the A flat. So I'm thinking of ways I can use the notes um, and then kind of resolve them or Possibilities just underneath that one note there. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, that's, that covers a few anyway. <laughs> so that's the kind of thinking when I'm improvising um, the, the, the kind of the thought process. Great, okay. Yeah.